I did draw and stuff and paint when I was a kid. Um, I can remember my mother sending, somehow getting in the mail, she planned it, got a book on perspective, like when I was four years old. So I like immediately was able to understand that and gobble it up just by drawing it. And then my grandfather painted, so I was around that. And I don't know, about grade seven or something, six, seven, I just started painting a lot, like all the time. And then that kind of stopped a bit. And then in high school, I had, well, I always wanted to take art. So I knew I was going to, I knew that already before high school. And then um, I got paints one year and was home one night, nowhere to go. I just started painting and I never stopped. <laughs> um, in high school, I did some night courses and then I went to a uh, small art school near where I lived, Dundas Valley School of Art. And, and when I got enough money, I guess I also went to OCAD part time in the summer. And then when I got enough money, I went to Nova Scotia College of Art and Design. So I got my BFA from NESCAD and then did a lot of artwork and got lots of grants and shows after that. And then later on, much later on, 95, 97, I went and got my master's because I started teaching for someone and I thought it was a lot more fun than the job I had. So Where did you start teaching? At Dundas Valley School of Art. And then I went to Guelph to get my degree and I taught Guelph. Dundas, um, Lethbridge, Nesca, Western, wow. and then where I am now too, Fanshawe College. I do lots of other work besides painting. Um, did lots of installation work for years, and film, and uh, photography, and et cetera, et cetera. So I don't really have a boundary between concepts and formal. I know lots of people do, but that doesn't. I have no interest in that because. Um, for me, it's all partly the same thing. Um, what makes you read and how you read is just as conceptual as saying you're not supposed to read. <laughs> so I merged the two together. And uh, I, did, I didn't paint for a while, or I painted some in my installations, but not extensively. So about uh, 98, 99, I was kind of tired of doing all the proposals for site-specific work. and installation stuff and I wanted that immediacy of working in the studio. So that's when I, oh, I'm just going to keep painting. So I started doing specific things um, in order to, and I guess in a way it was technical, to get uh, acquainted with some tools I was using. And so I did some stuff in acrylics for like two years and then I switched to oil, oils, which I prefer anyways, and started the way that I'm basically painting now. So I've been doing that for mm, <laughs> like 15 years. So it's a kind of process that I make that it's, it has, I'm kind of interested in these dualities between the kind of making a specificness. So there's a technique that I follow, that I've set up, that has all of these relations to painting and painting history. And, and uh, by the same time, it's a process that's immediate, that makes itself in front of me. So I want that kind of openness. So when I start it, I don't really know totally where the painting is going, uh, although I want a finished painting that contains you within the painting and doesn't really lead you out of that space. So I use, um, anyways, I start the process. You know, I put the others on sort of a structure, but I drag the paint and the paint actually mixes itself on the surface of the canvas. So when I'm watching it, it's all happening in front of me. I mean, I'm setting up a structure, but it, it has openness that occurs, and I kind of like that. So with that in mind, then I'm the f kind of viewing that happening, and I didn't really want the work to be, or this work in affinity that we see here, kind of grew out of several years, but it's paintings that are individual paintings, but they work it as a whole into an installation. So they're intended to have a singularity, but they're really all together in a whole mass. So there's like 110 paintings now and that can shift for each installation. So it's still about the space that it's in, the gallery or wherever it's being shown, that architecture has a certain demand or how the viewer will process the work in the environment, which is really important to me too. 
So the images that are created are like, well, you're not sure if they're abstract, you're not sure if they're representational, only because I'm using painting strategies as painting, not as, um, you know, schools of. So I'm combining those ideas and I want to make new images. So I want the images to be new for people too, so their imagination is set off just in the same way, like mine's a creative process, imagine it when I'm making it, and I think that process goes on to the, to the viewer rather than, oh, it's about this or that. Yeah, so it's kind of, you know, it's sometimes, you know, I'll have ones that I think should be in there and I'll throw random ones in and in the, the amount. And in this installation here, I have three, I get three different setups because I hadn't seen the space. It's only on map till I get here. And I had to ship out the work first. So um, then you get here and you think you, Sometimes your first ideas were, or what you, how you read it first is the most important, seems to happen. So I developed it <laughs> via being in the room again, yeah. And then thinking how someone else is gonna respond to the room or perhaps what the room has or doesn't have. So there's room, it's a long room, and it has you know, zigzagging ends. So I kind of wanted the feeling of being straight in the room. So now the installation is, four high, six wide on each side, but they square each other, so they reflect each other, so it squares off the room again mm. from what it originally was. So you might get a calmer sense when you're in the room, yeah. coming back to that. <laughs> I have influences from all over, I guess. Um, <laughs> everyone expects me to say painting, so I don't know if I have, do I have favorite painters, it comes and goes, or it, it develops, or rehashes, you know, I like something like a, you know, a Vermeer or like a Velasquez old stuff or I'll, you know, love something really uh, more of a minimal like Mondrian or, or I'll love, or, yeah, or, yeah, or, you know, yeah, or, you know totally messy and intellectual like a Jasper Johns or installation or like Eve Klein. So it's all over and I'll, love film, but I like really intellectual films, so like Jean-Luc Godard, things like that, so that would be a totally different side. And music's a factor too, like, you know, I think a lot of structural, minimal music or rock music that's similar based in around that, that kind of structure too, I'm really interested in, that repetitiveness, which you can see obviously in the way I make things. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you, should, you could say yes, but at the same time, I've looked through that so long, I don't know if I could actually <laughs> decode that to when it started. Um, I probably notice more when someone else says something than when I do, because they go, well, I don't get that, or how do you see it like that? So, but we all have our own lenses, so it's fun to learn everybody's. Yeah.